see my belly. Here's my face. Introduction. Should have made those adjustments beforehand. Good evening, folks. Assuming that it is evening where you are, although technically where I am, it's early Sunday morning. Real early, as in about an hour and two minutes into it. <sighs> it's your friend, Titan Nerd 68 or Charles or whatever here. Okay, don't call me whatever. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here to talk about a little something and bad and my stance on them. I plan on... Oh, I make a few minor adjustments and pull up my script. And if you would like to know why I will be reading from a script, it is to keep my mind from going off topic. As I notice, I have a tendency to do that. Hi, welcome back. Alright, so, let me start off by saying, you know, good and bad get thrown around a lot in today's society. At least I think so, don't you? And, um, granted, I do feel a certain way about those words and any and all variations thereof, as I just mentioned. But, hey, I throw them around as mindlessly as everybody else. Does it make it excusable? No, I don't think it does. But it's not like I'm making a life-threatening choice there. <sighs> so, what is good anyway? Well, of a favorable tendency, bountiful, attractive, adapted to a use or purpose, sound, having pleasurable qualities, wholesome, of a noticeably large size, full, based on excellent grounds, sufficient for a specific requirement, conforming to a standard, worthy of commendation, kind, upper class, flawless, uh, loyal, helpful, special, any song by Anvil, lots of things that I have not mentioned for brevity's sake. How about the opposite? Bad. Let's see. Below standard, harmful, unfavorable, deteriorating, morally unacceptable, evil, naughty, discomforting, defective, invalid, unhealthy, regretful, distasteful, inferior, any song by Coldplay, and again, many things added, omitted for brevity's sake. Ugh. Well, I hate to spoil your fun. Actually, I don't hate to spoil anybody's fun most of the time. That's irrelevant. My point is, the words are meaningless, folks. I don't, I don't think too many people are aware of that. And yes, granted, this is kind of just a thought of mine, an opinion, if you will. But, uh, I, I say they're meaningless. Thank you for watching the video. Nah, just kidding. But thank you for watching the video nonetheless. I'm not going to sign off just yet. So why are these words meaningless? I say it comes down to two meaning to, for two reasons. First of all, they're abstract, okay? You know, like love and hate. They're not really there. We just apply them to certain things. So, uh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm tired. It's As I mentioned, it's late slash early. Yeah. They're abstract. They're, they only exist in our heads where, of course, they're molded around our own experiences, thoughts, opinions, and occasionally by what those around us have, around us have brainwashed us to think. I uh, think you know what I'm talking about there. But uh, that plays right into the other reason I bring up. Relativity. As I like to put it, good and bad have so many different meanings to so many different people under so many different circumstances. I mentioned I think Anvil is a good band. I say that because I enjoy their guitar riffs, I enjoy the vocals. And there are misguided folks out there who don't think so for whatever reason, but they're allowed to think that. Doesn't affect me. And I think Coldplay's a bad band because their songs don't grab me the same way Anvil's do. And again, there are misguided people who don't think so for whatever reason, but again, they're allowed. It doesn't affect me. Take a candy bar, for example. If you're diabetic, it could be the bane of your existence. If you're hypoglycemic, it could be a lifesaver. Not everything's going to be good for everybody. But what about water? Well, yeah, water is very uh, beneficial to all life forms, but too much of it will kill you, and that's not exactly beneficial now, is it? Too much or too little of a good thing is bad, right? And so is too much of a bad thing, but does that make too little of a bad thing good? Again, it depends on who you ask and when. 
So let's keep that in mind and move on to the um, to the absolutes, as I titled it in my script. <sighs> God, specifically Yahweh, and uh, the other one, you know, Satan, the devil, whatever you call him. We're just going to call that character. We're just going to refer to these characters as God, I mean, as Yahweh and Satan. Yes, I say Yahweh as opposed to God because apparently there are other deities that you're not supposed to have before Yahweh, as I'm sure you know. <sighs> Let, let's start with him. You know how everybody says that he's the greatest good or something to that effect. And if you think that, fine. I don't care what you think, but I will tell you that I disagree with that. But Charles, without Yahweh nothing is possible. Forgive him, he knows not what he does. Well, that may be true. I mean, without Yahweh, we probably wouldn't have that command that says that you're supposed to stone gays, gay men to death because they're gay, largely. Because it's an abomination, whatever the fuck that means. Or for rebellious teens to also be stoned to death outside of the village because they're not giving in to authority. No, no, no. Without Yahweh, such great ideas probably would not have been possible, so... I suppose if you carry that kind of barbaric perspective, if you'll pardon the expression, look up the word barbaric and you'll know why I said that, then that would make Yahweh very good now, wouldn't it? Now, you probably don't know this, but I'm a bit bisexual, and I'm a little bit rebellious, and I happen to be a teenager. But those aren't the only reasons I'm opposed to those rules. I'm also opposed to them because, I don't know if you can tell this as well, but I am a thinking, feeling human being. And, well, because I'm a feeling human being, I don't see the justification in killing folks over such trivial matters, and because I'm a thinking human being, I just have a problem with stupid-ass bullshit in general. But, but of course, uh, well, um, forgive me. Huh. <sighs> My point is, Yahweh loses a couple points in my book for those little rules. I mean, why, why don't we uh, stop by Sodom and Gomorrah? Ask them just how many good deeds Yahweh's done for them recently. Or uh, how about Egypt during the plagues? Ask Pharaoh just what a great guy Yahweh is. Or how about we go for the big rain? Yeah, we all remember the flood. Let's, uh, let's ask somebody who isn't related to Noah just how beneficial Yahweh's actions towards this person have been. Well, those are different cases, Charles. All the people you brought up were sinners. Were they? Okay. Says who? Other than Yahweh, of course. Uh, do you say that? All right, that's fine. But why do you say it? Because Yahweh said it. Did you actually know any of the... Right before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they were sinners, because he didn't like what they... he Because somebody there looked at him funny. Did you actually know anybody who lived there personally? Well, did you? Yeah, that, that's what I thought. Shut, shut up. Sin, my friends, is simply another variation on that meaningless umbrella word, bad... And some of these sins, in whatever religious text you may consult, are normal, harmless activities. Now, people who say that Yahweh is the greatest good generally also say that Satan is the ultimate evil. Now, first off, let me start by saying that I have to do some further research on exactly how and why he fell. And so if you could enlighten... So if you would my, if you wouldn't mind helping enlighten me, by all means, go ahead. <clears throat> However, what I've gathered so far was, it was all essentially because he wanted to be like Yahweh. He wanted to elevate his status to do better than what he was. Self-improvement. Always beneficial, right? Right? So what's the real problem here? It sounds to me like it... Satan's going on a journey to improve himself, which is apparently selfish. Uh, Yahweh had some felt some kind of way about it, and apparently we've gone thousands of years without either without either of them putting on their big boy pants and just putting this whole silly matter behind them. Pat Kendall mentioned in one of his videos that 
Maybe a lot of the world's problems could be avoided if Yahweh would just forgive Satan. Of course, that's another topic, uh, but I think you get the gist of my statement here. And um, if you want, if you want something of a um, scratch that, it's unrelated. <sighs> but back on the topic of Yahweh and Satan, or rather, the statement of the world. The state of the world. God, I am so tired. <laughs> yeah, listen to me. And uh, for those of you, who, and um, in case you're wondering, I'm an atheist. I'll touch on that in some other video. Back to the state of the world and how it relates to my interpretations of good and bad. Now, uh, I used to read manga. I haven't read any in quite a while. Uh, that's a different topic, but... um. I have read the seventh volume of Shaman King, and um, Tauren's grandfather says something along the lines of, We have killed many people, and that would likely be considered evil these days. But take a look around. Good and evil have such little meaning in an ever-changing world. And I agree with that because I believe the world is constantly in flux. I believe... I wouldn't call myself a Taoist, but I believe in the basic tenet of balance being key. I believe in the forces of order and chaos, the yin and the yang, and I believe that death is the one true order because we know it happens, and life is the one true chaos because we never know what is going to happen. So life's always chaotic. Life's chaotic, basically, shit just happens. You know, it just happens. It might be, you might see it as good, somebody else might see it as bad, and somebody else might not give a damn about it. That will be me, by the way. You know, unless it happens to me or somebody I know, in which case I'm going to say, oh, it's good, or oh, it's bad, and of course, there's always going to be somebody else who agrees with me, someone who disagrees with me, and another person who just doesn't care. I'll go deeper into my beliefs on life, the universe, and whatnot in some other video. All right, well... Why don't we examine absolutes within the real world, i.e. people we know for a fact existed. <sighs> I decided to use Hitler and Gandhi as my examples for this particular video. We'll start with... We will start with Der Führer. Pardon the bad German. Now first, let me clarify, in no way, shape, or form do I agree with Hitler's actions. I know that many people would say he was evil, and if you were to ask me, I would probably say that too. And I don't know if you watched my videos on how I feel we should live, but um, if you did, you would know my definition of murder. And if you didn't watch that, in a nutshell, I believe that a murder is when one living thing takes the life of another living thing, not in a way that's out of self-defense and with no intention of using the taken life efficiently i.e. sustenance. So, I just don't agree with murder. It, by my definition, by pretty much, well, it, it depends exactly on how you define it. I mean, I certainly don't agree with it by the way I define it. And I don't care who is being killed and who's, I don't care who's doing the killing, I don't care who's being killed, I don't care why they are being killed. You ask me, Hitler is wrong, Wrong. That's by, but that's by my perspective, that's by the perspectives of most of the people today, uh, certainly by the perspective of everybody I know, or at least so they say. <sighs> but when you look at it from his perspective, it was the best thing he could do for the world. As ugly as you may find someone else's view on an issue, you really have to see the issue from that person's perspective as well as your own. It's a, it's a better way perhaps even the best way to fully understand something. If you, to get, to get any particular situation, you gotta look at it from as many sides as possible, no matter how ugly they may be. And of course, you know, just your views will always be biased based on your beliefs, ideas, customs, knowledge, experience, etc., etc., and so will other people's. So, there's really no good or bad situations or people. Or words, either, but that's going to be a follow-up video, which, which I'm going to be recording and uploading after the sun has risen. 
One of my teachers said that if someone is truly your best friend, you can tell that person what about him or her you don't like to his or her face. In other words, you just have to see the desirable and the undesirable people with people and, you know, well, frankly, you just got to tell them so that the undesirable can hopefully be made desirable. I mean, what was undesirable? Now, what did we find undesirable about Hitler? He was a murderous anti-Semite, and, let's be honest, the man had a damn ugly mustache. After that, he always looked so grim. I, I, I guess, I don't know. I guess there was something about uh, killing six million Jews that just pissed him the fuck off. Search me, I wouldn't know. But what was desirable about him? Well, let's, let's admit it. The man had a neat haircut. And, um... He was a damn good orator, you have to admit. I mean, of course, it sucks how he used his oratory skills. But, he, let's be honest here. Hitler knew how to get a crowd going. Now let's look at the other person. Gandhi. Most people find him desirable. Well, why? Let's see. His uh, civil disobedience... The nonviolent protest against the British when they were uh, oppressing India. Let's admit, let's face it, the man was very wise, and some people would say that he was desirable because he was a vegetarian. Although Hitler was also a vegetarian. Go figure. Personal choice. It's not something I could do. Now, what was undesirable about Gandhi? Well. While in South Africa in 1908, he wrote kafirs, which is a derogatory term for black people that was used at the time, derived from an Arabic word that means infidel, are, as a rule, uncivilized, the convicts even more so. They are troublesome, very dirty, and live almost like animals. Oh, folks, I hate to break that image, but apparently Gandhi was a little bit racist. I mean, I don't, based on what I've read about him, doesn't seem to me like he was a J. Edgar Hoover, and it, grant, admittedly, I haven't read an awful lot on him. But, you know, the point I'm making here is you have to see it from both sides. You know, Hitler's oral skills do not cloud the fact that he was responsible for millions of deaths, nor does Gandhi's apparent bigotry cloud his message of peaceful protest. I look at both of those people in about the same way. I mean, they both died long before I was born, so there's no way I could have known either man personally and formed a true opinion, and, well, in both cases, those are really just two different sides of the same person. I mean, me, I've got, I mean, I, I know I have some good qualities, but I know I've got some bad ones as well. And so do you. You might not admit to them as readily as I just did, but you know you have your own dark side. Huh. <sighs> So there you go, folks. Um, I'm not a guy who believes in very many absolutes. Of course, I don't go so far as to say there are no absolutes because I have half a brain. I have more than half a brain. At least I think I do. Yeah, it feels like more than half a brain's in there. Maybe about three quarters. 75%. That's not too bad, is it? Not too bad, <laughs> is it? But yeah. Yeah, if you... Yeah, of course... I think there are some people who might not be aware of this, but the statement there are no absolutes actually is an absolute, so if you believe that, then congratulations. You've won the award for Dumbass of the Year. I don't know how many ways you may have to split that award, but I'm sure you'll find a way. Or maybe you won't, because uh, apparently that makes you a dumbass. But if there is an absolute, but if there are two, at least two absolutes in which I believe, good is meaningless, and bad is meaningless. And uh, now that I think about it, I think I'd say that for pretty much any abstract, you know? I mean, take the word, take happy for, for example. What makes you feel happy? Is it friends? Friends make me feel happy. Is it being safe? That makes me feel happy. Well, or at least it would, because I believe that we're never truly safe. And that's got nothing to do with the government. That's just got more to do with my view of chaos. You know, how do I know the ceiling's not going to collapse on me any minute? How do I know the floor's not going to go from under me? How do I know it won't spontaneously combust or the planet will get sucked into a black hole or something like that? But 
Again, another topic. <laughs> I write up a script and I still get off topic. Shows you how my brain works. <sighs> but the point is, what makes you feel what you call happy? Or sad, or angry, or anything else? It's all in how you look at things, folks. <sighs> so, that's my little spiel. I've wasted about 20 minutes of your time and mine. And I'm going to do a follow-up on language after the sun has risen. And I've gotten some degree of sleep. That's all I really wanted to say here, folks. Good night. May the force be with you, ride the tiger, and join the heavy metal.